the stovepipe, I want to do another lesson uh, for you guys and um, what I'll call sevens and nines, all right? Uh, I call the sevens and nines uh, because I don't know what the hell else to call it. And uh, it's just what it is, right? Okay, so if you guys see my other lessons, you know what the power chord is, right? doesn't matter what, what note you start on. It's this interval of your, where, how your fingers are placed that makes it movable. So in this case, uh, cover your A and put your ring finger where the five is. Hear that tone? It's a very nice tone. So neither major nor minor. It's all the, also the basis of... See, the only thing moving is my pinky, right? Okay, so with that in mind, my middle finger, I'm not flipping you guys off intentionally here, but my middle finger, if you drop it onto your G string, in this case at the uh, sixth fret, you should get a sound that sounds like this. Okay? Sounds sort of bluesy already, right? Okay, that's a seventh chord. That's movable. G, F, okay, if I want a D, C, B, okay, so learn that shape, be able to drop that thing down without even thinking about it. Now, the nines part of seven and nines would be the ninth chord, and if you guys aren't familiar with that, uh, check out my ring finger. I, I'm basically barring across three strings, the, the lower three, right? Sound like this. Okay. In A. Okay. Now I'm going to take my middle finger and stop flipping you off. And I'm going to put it again at the fifth fret, but I'm going to put it on the A string. Then I'm going to take my index finger and I'm going to drop it onto the G string at the fourth fret. And it should sound like this. Okay. Okay, that sound should sound bluesy, a little jazzy, right? Here the jazz guys love 9, 11, 13, right? Right, right? Major sevenths. So anyway, that's a ninth chord. Cool thing about that. Did you hear that? Okay, if you're new to music and your brain is wired for the blues, which I'm sure it is, you should hear. That should get you excited because that should be moving you toward the sort of sounds that you want to be making that are they give you great feedback because you're playing you're like you know you just rip somebody's heart out so that's, that's why we do this thing right okay so uh, a7 jump back up here to a we're covering the one we're covering the five right we're building that seventh chord okay now check this out that seventh chord I'm not going. Hear how all that's ringing out? You don't really want that. So you want. You don't want. You just want. Basically, what I'm doing is, is I'm rocking my hand like that. Okay? When I hit the bass string, I'm rocking it this way. And then I'm rocking it that way. In the simplest form, I'm just playing enough of that, and I'm releasing. Basically playing it in between my in the tip of my index finger and the, sh the shaft of my index finger down here, just rocking this way and that way. You can also think of it as, as I'm just releasing pressure and deadening the string. So. I've written two uh, pretty popular songs called, uh, one's called It Goes Down Fine. Uh, the other one is called uh, Close That Joint. And both of these songs, uh, It Goes Down Fine is in A, and it just goes, uh, um, Rum and Coke and a tea and tea. A glass of booze just does it for me. Okay, then go to that ninth chord. I can down a 12 pack, hitting the game. Tip them up, the results the same. Go to the five, make a ninth chord on the five. It's all good. I'm just fine. Come on the four, and then back.
like the one. Okay, we'll go through that slow and then I'll speed it back up. this thing a little bit because once you get that under your fingers you're gonna say let's hot rod that a little bit all right so okay sevens and nines right generally the first four bars I, I play pretty close to home and then I start stretching out a little bit so uh, every time we come around like Sevens, right? All I'm doing is making that ninth chord, right? Okay. But then drop it down. Take it flatten and bring it back. Okay. And go back over here. And what I'm doing with that is I'm making a power chord, right? Root five. And all I'm doing is going. With my picking hand, I'm just going. I'm just going. Okay, it's rhythmic. It's cool. Uh, if your uh, if your uh, lead guy is uh, if he can hear your amp, he's gonna go. Yeah, that's cool. So uh, then go to the five, flatten and bring it back. Okay. If you're new to those ninth chord ninth chords, you're gonna have a death grip on this neck, and your hand's not gonna slide. That's normal. That is normal. I swear to God, when I first started playing guitar, I almost started playing left-handed because I thought I've obviously had a stroke at some point because my hand won't do what I want it to do. But you know what? Keep, never put your guitar away. Keep it right by the couch. Piss your girlfriend off playing. But look, pretty soon, one day you're going to go, wow, you know, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm playing, man. I'm, I'm, I can slide that damn thing around now. Okay? And go down to the floor. Now, what I'm doing is instead of going, I'm sort of outlining a turnaround. I'm going one, I'm going four, one, five. Okay? One, four, one, five. Ready? Now we're back to the top again, right? Play it straight. Okay, let me show you a couple other things. What I did is instead of doing that turnaround, I went that way. I just repeated that flatten and walk up thing. Now, as you're playing along and you hear the four coming, because you will hear it coming, right? That change is on the way. So here we are on the one. See, it's coming. So when you feel that go, coolness, huh? That's what the bass player is doing. All, he, all the bass player's doing is sitting there and he's outlining whatever he's playing. You know. He's just walking up to the four, right? So we do the same thing. You can do it that way or you can play a whole chord. And then go up and flatten. Sounds cool as hell, sir. You guys got it? All right. Hit pause again. 
stuff doesn't happen overnight. The the myth of the uh, you know the three year old kid who picks up and starts playing Jimi Hendrix says, "Oh shit, don't believe it." You know what it is? It's perseverance. See where that that guitar is pressing against my chest right there? Play till when you go to shower the next morning, you've got a red spot there, and you're like, what the hell is that? You know what it is? It's your guitar. That's you becoming a guitar player. The other thing, uh, play till your shoulder hurts. Play till your arm hurts. Don't play till you can't play. Now, I'm not saying that, but what I'm saying is, how many guitar players have you seen? See where my arm is against this uh, this guitar? This is a Schecter Exotic Star, by the way. Uh, but see where my, my arm rubs? Eventually, that finish is going to come off because I'm playing the dog crap out of this guitar. So, you know what? That's cool. That, that means you're, you're learning, you're playing, you're, you're becoming a guitar, guitar player. So all this stuff um, that I'm doing, you'll be able to do eventually and sing at the same time. You'll be able to walk around the stage, talk to people while you're playing like, Hey man, how you doing? Damn, you look nice. What are you doing later? Right? So that, that means the more you practice it, when you first practice it, you're using 100% of your brain, all of it. And, and maybe maybe you don't have enough uh, motor skills and synapses burned through yet to get it. But you know what? Keep doing it, keep doing it, keep doing it. And then one day you're like, and I'm not saying I have it. I'm just saying it will become easier and easier. It, it's When you first start playing, you're like, oh, my God, it's so frustrating. You know, that's that's what these lessons are for is to try to help you jump past a lot of stuff that's gonna waste a lot of your time. Use a power chord, variations of that power chord, build those ninth chords, those are pretty tough. But you know what? They sound cool and they're worth working on. Okay, and here's why. Here's the second part. Sevens and nines, right? Sevens and nines. Taking that same thing where we're just playing the little jump thing. I start on the five, it doesn't matter where I start, but I'm just gonna do it for effect here. Guess what? You now know another two thousand songs. Ain't that a pity? Man, ain't that a crying shame? Ain't that a pity? Ain't that a crying shame? It's like to nine below zero Pull me down for another man 